In the end of this video, we will summarize if Lyft is the much better Uber stock. Now, what I mean in this is Lyft may be the better ride-sharing investment for you. Is it the better stock? Do they have the better potential? They are maybe more focused than Uber on the main business. All about it here in this vlog. Wolf of Dubai. So first of all, before diving into the specifics of the Lyft app, I want to go into the comparison between Uber and Lyft, because as we know, these are the biggest competitors against each other, not only as a stock investment, but also as competitors per se, especially in the USA, because Lyft's product is limited to the USA and only, and uh, Uber is uh, actually playing worldwide a big role in ride sharing. So. Let's have a look at this graphic. This uh, I found beautifully done on the internet. Obviously, the fair price seems to be the same and uh, the difference or the first differentiates uh, is between the product or the experience inside the ride share so ride sharing with uber is more a little bit more luxurious uh, while uh, lyft is more casual and you know sometimes more friendly more let's say people friendly experience and uber was for a long time having the problem that uber drivers were not that uh, let's say friendly to their guests and also uber was not so good to their drivers as well and lyft was the you know the better the more friendly competitor and uh, they developed that um, for their uber obviously have much more cars worldwide available and uh, lyft is much more limited they are concentrating on the US they want to conquer US and how this uh, works also in the market share we will look into the other graphics as well now they are founded in 2012 which is about three years later than Uber and uh, Uber is uh, in more than 60 countries available. They also purchased quite uh, frequently before the IPO. Also a big ride sharing company here, Kareem. However, they are growing in some countries they failed to grow, like for example, China. However, uh, let's uh, jump into the next uh, graphic for you. So this graphic is quite interesting because you see how Lyft and Uber is doing against the traditional taxi service in New York City. The taxi city in the whole wide world and you can see that both companies are quite significantly uh, growing at the same pace you know you have this really parallel growth uh, graph uh, obviously uber with a much more market share here and growth and uh, however the speed or the acceleration of the growth is pretty same and uh, the next one is quite of my favorite graphics because it shows you how uber mainly had almost 100% of the market share in ride sharing and then slowly from 2015 until 2019 declined and, and Lyft is actually up the, on the upcoming they started later and they obviously started with zero market share and then grow into the market of Uber and taking customers and you almost can see if this graphs continue then at some point there will be a cross between Uber and Lyft and I'm very curious if one day, maybe in 2021 or 2022, Lyft can actually overgrow in market share Uber. If this goes in the same direction, if you see also the graph of Lyft is a little bit stronger, more narrow than the Uber decline actually. And therefore this is really curious to see in the next couple of years. So let's look, I, I love to look into the stocks, okay? So let's look directly into the stock graphs of 
Lyft and Uber and Uber compared. So we can see that the IPO of Lyft, and this is, I think, one of the most important moves of Lyft was to come earlier than Uber to the stock market. They had their IPO in March 2019. But what happened then was unfortunately that they lost about 40% until now of the market value. And uh, compared to Uber, which Uber we will put up now if you see if you if we put them next to each other uber did their ipo in may 2019 and lost just about 15 or almost 15.5 percent uh, so Lyft with its almost 14 billion dollar market cap versus the big giant 60 billion market cap on the other side Uber lost significantly more than Uber on the stock market but uh, let's dive into the earnings and revenue numbers so you can see how Lyft is really standing on its feet. Last but not least let's go also into the main key metrics if we are looking into how the company how the stock is really valued. So we have a company value market cap of about 14 billion dollars. Now on the other side which PE, one of the most important metrics for seeing how the company is doing, cannot be really used here because the PE ratio would be negative and not, not existing actually because the company makes almost half a billion dollars loss <laughs> on uh, about uh, almost four billion dollars revenue. So it's still growing. They're using the money to grow more and therefore they are losing a lot of money still. However, the other metrics that are important is uh, the price sales ratio that is uh, about 4.24 which is a little bit on the higher side I have to comment uh, so I believe that uh, the 14 billion market cap is quite already even the drop was quite significantly as we have seen from the IPO 40% unfortunately for those investors who just jumped in into IPOs I'm really really sorry for you guys and, uh, and and, and uh, something like this that you maybe lost 40% of your money just because you thought, okay, this is the next hot thing that just IPO that I'm going there. It's really, really bad. However, if we are looking into the price PS ratio here over four, that's that's more than uh, companies like or the similar way that Netflix or Amazon has that making so much revenue as well. And uh, so you can see that this metric is quite uh, saying a lot about living that there's huge potential still in the uh, stock price uh, so let's see how this uh, moves forward so what you can definitely say that Lyft is a growth stock now if you're looking on those numbers the numbers are just beautiful so here the revenue grow year over year 63 percent active riders grew 28 percent and active riders grew 27 percent per active rider and the contribution margin was over 50%. Now this is the latest quarter earnings and uh, we can be very look forward to the next quarter because this will be just a couple of days when Lyft will announce their new numbers. But if you're looking into the other numbers, the loss per share, the company is still not profitable. They uh, lost about 1.5 seven dollars per share versus 1.66 expected and they had the revenue of 955 versus 915 million dollars in the last quarter and also they expect uh, 3.57 billion in revenue over the whole year in 2019 let's see if they really uh, did this and uh, this is more than the increase of uh, 3.5 billion dollars that they wanted to actually make moreover the revenue projected for the fourth quarter should be also in the range of 985 which is much more than the last quarter before 955 so you can see on all fronts Lyft is growing very well and uh, they are saying actually that they are on good terms to be uh, profitable in just the next 
two years now this is this is a big big question here for big big uh, ride sharing companies like uber and lyft the big question is when are you profitable because this is something that investors especially investors that having uh, this big ipos uh, participated in then uh, usually you can see that they are getting impatient and especially we have seen this trend of when this company actually make money is coming to more fruition it's getting more important for investors out there because they invested so much money and the company is growing so much uh, faster they are spending so much they are burning so much more money and therefore this uh, profitability question is very important for so many investors and I believe that Lyft maybe has the bigger chance on profitability than Uber or getting uh, be faster at their goals so why I'm thinking thinking this this is why so first of all we have to agree that Lyft is number two ride-sharing company worldwide okay after uber there's uh, none bigger company than lyft in the hierarchy of ride sharing companies i'm a little bit afraid that uber is trying to run into too many directions i i have one one story so steve jobs was fired from apple and apple started to produce uh, uh, printers they produced the accessory for computers they produced so many products and when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, then actually he cut it half of it because he said, you can either be good in one or two services or products, or you will be mediocre in many products and uh, then you can choose to either really launch your company for a rocket start or maybe be mediocre and die out slowly if the competition getting better. Now, if we are looking into the Uber portfolio, we can see a lot. Now you can see Uber ride sharing, Uber food delivery, Uber autonomous cars, flying taxis, Uber work, Uber bike, Uber fly. There's so many things that I, I even don't know if I could cover all of them and Lyft is really concentrating on US. They're really concentrating on ride sharing and they're really concentrating on scooters and that's it. So you can see how Lyft is really strong in their core product and getting better in the core product. If they concentrate the same manpower on their products, then Uber has concentrated maybe the same on two or three different products or services. And therefore, I believe that if you're focused and have this really freaking tunnel vision on the things, on the main business that makes hell of money or can make hell of money, then I think this can be much more profitable and that's why I believe that Lyft might be for you the better Uber stock.